Okay, so we'll be discussing about the overview of our parasitology. Okay, so we have here the introduction with our parasitology. So parasitology is a separate branch of uh, medical laboratory science, primarily dealing here with two uh, organisms. One, you call it once the parasite, and the other one is the host. So it's just a relationship here between the parasite, which eventually try to take advantage or they try to be highly dependent on the host. When speak about the host, on the other hand, so the host here is the one on which your parasite depends on. Okay, so for this uh, subject, we'll be discussing about the different uh, parasites which try to infect the human. Okay, then we have here the host parasite relationship, so you call it one as the symbiosis. So when speak about the symbiosis, it's just the relationship between two different species, on which living together here are so interdependent to one another, and most likely living apart is not possible. Okay, for the classification of your symbiosis, first we have here your mutualism. So the mutualism here is a relationship between two organisms in which both of them try to benefit one another, but neither of them is harmed or injured. Commensalism, on the other hand, so only one party try to benefit with the relationship, but the other one is either unharmed or injured. So, like for example, we have your Entamoeba coli, we consider this one as our commensal parasite or a commensal species of our amoeba. Okay, and eventually only here your amoeba try to take advantage of that because this one is a parasite. And human most likely do not much get um, injured by this one and consider here that one as our commensal parasite. So again, in... Uh, when we speak about the mutualism, so both of them try to benefit with the relationship. But in a commensalism, only one of them try to benefit. However, the other party is not harmed or injured. Then we have your parasitism. So only one party here try to benefit while the other here is being harmed or injured. So when we speak about your parasitism, so your parasite, Okay, is eventually try to benefit with the entire relationship, uh, primarily for the survival of the parasite. Survival of the parasite here by means of food procurement in the host or even rendering here protection against environmental factors in order for that parasite to survive. Okay, so we have here the classification of our parasites. Okay, the first one, we have your classification according to the habitat. So, we speak about the habitat where the parasite here try to inhabit. So, we can classify our parasite as either endoparasite or ectoparasite. We speak about the endoparasite, so this is a parasite that able to enter the body of the host and eventually try to uh, multiply within or inside the body of the host. So, most of our parasites are actually endoparasites, like in the case of your Jarja, flagellates natin, your amoeba, we have also here your malaria. Okay, and um, we have also here the ectoparasite. We we'll speak about the ectoparasite. So, this is a parasite wherein they try to inhabit only here the outer skin or the external surface of our body, or most like in our skin, in your hair or scalp. Like, for example, we have here your lice, we have also here your ticks. Most likely, if what you have here for that would be your endoparasite, you call this one your infection. If that one is just outside your body, most likely we call that one as your infestation. Another one we have here according to the mode of living. Okay, so we have your obligate parasite. We'll speak about obligate parasite. This is an absolute requirement for the host. So in order for the parasite to survive, to complete its life cycle, then your parasite, if that one is an obligate parasite, it needs to infect your host. Without the host, it will not able to survive. There's an absolute requirement for the host. Facultative, or you call it as opportunistic, okay, most likely this is a type of parasite that uh, either uh, it can survive or exist um, with or without the host. 
And most likely, they can survive here even without the host in the form of free-living parasite. When we speak about the free-living, they are found in the soil, they are found in the environment, or even in the water. But um, they can survive on that. Okay, but they if they find a suitable host, they can eventually in, still infect. Diba? But apparently, without the host, they can still able to survive. And they exert here, or they assume here as uh, your free-living free living form. So, example for that, we have your Strongyloid Storicoralis. So, it would have here a free-living parasite form here in the soil. And you could also have here your free-living na mga amoebas. We have here your Negleria, and we have also here your Acanta amoeba. Then we have your sporous parasites. So we speak about the sporous parasite. Those are the parasites wherein they are free living in nature. Okay, and most likely they are infecting animals. So human, they can infect or human can get acquired that one through an accidental infection. And however here once they try to be ingested by the human, okay, they will enter the body of the human host here. But apparently, they will pass out unchanged. So, either alive or dead. So, unchanged sila. So, I mean to say, they do not uh, eventually undergoing here a form of infection or a form of uh, multiplication or reproduction inside the body of the human. Okay, now we go to your host. So, and speak about the host. This is the organism here wherein your parasite try to depend on in order for that to survive. Okay, we classify our host here as number one, definitive host. So, we speak about the definitive host. The definitive host here is the host where in the parasite try to assume here the sexual reproduction. We speak about the sexual reproduction, so dapat meron kang male. Like in the case, for example, of your uh, uh, nematodes. Okay, so you should have here the male adult worm and you have your female adult worm. They copulate. Okay, and eventually the female we're going to lay egg. So that's the sexual reproduction. So eventually you consider that one as your definitive host. And most likely humans serve here as definitive host, especially for the helmets or our nematodes or roundworms. In the case, for example, of our malaria, so the malaria will have, would have your two uh, hosts. One is your definitive host, the other one is the intermediate host. So the mosquito vector, the female Anopheles mosquito, serve here as the definitive host. So since this one serves here as the definitive host, it is within the mosquito here where it tries to undergo sexual multiplication. Um, you call that process here as your sporogony. Okay, and then um, what is being involved for that would be your micro and macro gametes. So this is for male na uh, gametocytes, and we have also here the female na gametocytes. So parang sex cells siya, and when they try to uh, combine, so eventually it results here to the zygote formation, and therefore you're able to allow the the parasite here to multiply by sexual. And again, that one occur here in the mosquito vector. Um, intermediate host, on the other hand, we consider here it is where your asexual reproduction takes place. This is sexual, this is your asexual reproduction. So when we speak about asexual reproduction, your parasite here try to change or to transform into another stage without um, uh, multiplication. I mean, without uh, giving birth to another organisms. So they tend to mature lang, to matanda, and actually change into another form, but they are not giving birth to another organism. Then you consider that one as your intermediate host. Wherever that stage of the parasite that you undergo a sexual reproduction, then it becomes here considered as our intermediate host. Okay, there are two forms of your intermediate host, or there are some parasites wherein they have two intermediate hosts, especially the cestodes or the flux natin. Okay, so the first intermediate host here try to assume the early larva stage. Okay, like for example, we have here the snail serve as their first intermediate host in the case of your flukes. Okay, so within a snail, okay, that um, from your egg, it try to hatch in the water and then try to release your miracidium. Okay, then the miracidium here try to penetrate the snail. 
faith now. Okay, so from this egg, again, your fluke or the cestodes, basically their life cycle is in the water. They have an aquatic na life cycle. Okay, so when the female worm here try to shed egg, it try to go to the water, and eventually the egg here try to hatch, and then it try to release here the mirasidium. Then the mirasidium try to swim in the water and try to penetrate the snail. Acting here as the first intermediate host. And then the snail here will try to be converted to your cercaria. Okay? Then again, the first intermediate host here try to assume here your early larval stage. So, Mirasidium and even your cercaria. Then we have here the second intermediate host assume here the infective stage. Okay? So, if you have your snail, diba, it, it eventually your. Mirasidium will be converted, will be able to enter here the snail. That's within the snail, your mirasidium will be converted to your cercaria. And then the cercaria eventually will be released out of your snail. Lalabas ito sa snail, ay magsiswim sa water. And then pupunta siya dito sa ating second intermediate host. Your, depending on the type of the flux, the second intermediate host can be a fish. Or could be any of the uh, water animals, mga small fish, mga small fish natin, mga copepods, mga crustaceans. But also have here your vegetable na uh, vegetation. And all that one can assume here the second intermediate host. So when, once your cercaria try to go here to your second intermediate host, this cercaria will be transforming to your meta cercaria. And then the metacercaria will be considered here as the infective stage. And then if you have your host here, okay, like if you try to eat this one fish or vegetable here containing this metacercaria, then eventually you get infected. And therefore, we consider here your second intermediate host as the one try to harbor your infective stage. In the case of your flux here, so the infective stage would be the metacercaria found here in your second intermediate host. Okay, um, with the, the malaria, so again the malaria, the mosquito here serve as its definitive host. And human, okay, serve as its intermediate host. Again, for the malaria, again, the mosquitoes serve as its definitive host where it try to undergo a sexual reproduction. We call that one sporogony. And the human serve as its intermediate host where it try to undergo here a sexual reproduction. You call that one your schizo, schizogony. Okay, another one we have here, the reservoir host or the reserva host. So basically, a uh, reservoir host here considered as the animal host. So this one help here in order for the continuity of the uh, life cycle of the parasite. So most likely, this is the repository of your parasite. So most likely, this one are animals. Parathenic host, on the other hand, is a type of the host here where it eventually harbors the infective stage of the parasite, but do not allow the developmental uh, multiplication of your parasites. So, it serve only here as a way of uh, passive transfer of your parasites. So, you try to get the parasite, to try to acquire the parasite, but within its body, the parasite do not undergo developmental transformation or changes. Then we have here the zoonosis. So, speak about zoonotic infections, just infections we're in. Um, primarily, the hosts of this parasite are animals, and human can eventually get to have an accidental infection by this if it try to have a close contact with that infected, with that infect, uh, infected na animals, close contact, or like for example, also try to ingest or to eat that infected na animals. Okay, then we have also here the vector. So the vector is the instrument of the transfer. 
of our parasite or the infection. So we can classify our vector as mechanical or biological. So we speak about your mechanical. Mechanical here is just the instrument of the positive transfer then. So I mean to say, uh, it can transfer the parasites, but um, para to transfer niya lang. Nothing will going to happen with the parasite once it is within its body. So wala nangyayari, hindi siya like the transfer and parasites within its the body of this um, mechanical vector. So for that, we have your flies, we have our cockroaches. Then we have also here your biological vectors of so biological vector in the other hand. So this one is a type of vector which uh, it can transfer the infection and within the body of that biological vector here, the parasite try to undergo a transformation or development. For example, we have your mosquito. This is the biological vector here for the uh, uh, transfer of the infection of your malaria or even for your filaria. So mechanical vector like your flies, cockroach, they can uh, transfer here the infection, especially like uh, your amoebiasis. Okay, they can also transmit that one. Like uh, if you have the parasite amoeba, they can transmit that one if they're going to go to your food, diba? Tapos kapag hindi mo na malayan, then eventually you're able to get infected by that. And okay, then we have here the life cycle. So it's a cycle. I try to depict here primarily the entire uh, stages of the development of the parasite. So starting here with uh, uh, the life cycle here from the environment, then it will go to the body. It will be uh, from the environment, from the infective stage. Then the host cell will get infected by that. And once you get infected, the parasite will go inside your body and it will undergo a development of changes or transformation until such time that it can eventually spread its infection and the cycle goes on. So we have here important components here of our life cycle. The first one, we have here the mode of transmission. And speak about the mode of the transmission. So it's the process, okay, how you get infected. So like for example, ingestion or skin penetration. So ingestion, like in the case of your amoebiasis or even in, in case of your um, flagellates natin or skin penetration like in the case of your hookworm or even in the schistosomes. So those are mode of your transmission. Infective stage on the other hand refers here to the stage where it eventually uh, enters the body of the host and eventually start to have an infection. So if that Stage of the parasite here is not an infective stage. Even if you try to acquire that one, you will not get infected. Okay, then we have also here the diagnostic stage. When we speak about the diagnostic stage, it is the stage of the parasite where if you try to identify that one under the microscope, you can identify that one as okay, that would be the, the parasite. Like for example, um diagnostic stage of your uh, ascaris, for example, would be the egg. So if that, that egg here will be seen under the microscope, it would, this, the egg na characteristic niya, very unique na characteristic niya. So therefore, it can lead you to diagnose na the patient as the uh, ascaris lumbricoides infection. So that would be your diagnostic stage. Um, hindi lahat ng infective stage natin are diagnostic stage. Most likely, hindi anong effective stage ang diagnostic stage natin. Diagnostic stage can be a larva of the parasite, can also be an egg of the parasite. Basta any stage of the parasite that can lead you to diagnose and to identify the uh, species of your parasite that become here our diagnostic stage. Okay, then we have also here the life cycle. So we can classify the life cycles either direct or indirect. So we speak about the direct life cycles. The type, it's a type of the life cycle here wherein the host do not have an intermediate host. Like for example, in the case of our amoeba, so you get invited here by the amoeba through ingestion of, of contaminated food and water containing here the infective stage. You call the infective stage here as the cis. And then if you get, you try to ingest the contaminated food in water, then containing the cyst, then you get infected by that. 
So that's direct. On the other hand, indirect life cycle, on the other hand, so this type of uh, parasitic infection where in the parasite here has an intermediate host. Like for example, the case of your schistosomes. Okay, your schistosome, for example here, schistosomiasis. Okay, so or in the case of your fluke, so schistosome is a type of your fluke. Um, the schistosome require an intermediate host, but it has only one intermediate host. Okay, an intermediate host of that is a snail. And a snail contains its infective stage in the form of the cercaria. Other fluke, dalawang kanilang, in fact, kanilang, dalawang kanilang intermediate host. Okay, so like in the case of the other fluke, diba, that first intermediate host, kanina na discuss natin, it contains the cercaria. And their second intermediate host here contains your metacercaria. But in the case of your schistosome, since isa lang kanyang intermediate host, its infective stage is only the cercaria. Kasi hindi naman siya makapunta sa second intermediate host para mag-transform to become your metacercaria. And therefore, you get affected by that by your cercaria. Okay, and then you get infected here by your schistosomes through your skin penetration. And the cercaria try to penetrate your skin. And eventually try to get infection. So this is a type of your indirect life cycle because this one contains your, or I mean this type of uh, parasitic infection which requires an intermediate host. Okay, then we have here the term parasitic infection versus your parasitic disease. So when we speak about the infection, so it's just characterized here by uh, mild signs and symptoms or manifestation of the infection or the disease pathology. Uh, but when we speak about the disease already here, so it would have a severe manifestation of the uh, disease. Develops here pathological changes. Okay, signs and symptoms would have varying degree and much of that are severe manifestation. Toxic manifestation. We have also here inflammatory process and you have your generalized or localized pain, especially in our gastrointestinal tract because much of your parasitic infection are gastrointestinal tract. Um, they are infecting that part in our body. Okay, we have here different factors for affecting the transmission of the parasite. The first one, you should have the source of the infection. So, source of infection can be the food, water, soil, or many others. And we have also effective mode of transmission and portal of entry. So, dapat makapasok siya sa katawan natin. Then we have the presence of your susceptible hosts. Okay, so sometimes some of your parasites were able to get you infection here because of your immune system status. Okay, so you call it one as opportunistic na mga parasite. Number four, you should have a successful entry of the infective stage of your parasite. Again, in order for you to get infected, then you need to acquire or you need to harbor here the infective stage, not the other stage or not the other developmental stage of the parasite. Because if that one is not infective stage, even if you try to harbor that stage of the developmental stage of that parasite, you will not get infected. Okay, then we have here the sources of the infection. So uh, this is also the way of uh, how the infection here, how the infection are able to get started in the possible host. So the first one, we have your soil transmitted. Uh, group. So when we speak about the soil transmitted group, so basically the infection uh, able to acquire through the contact with the soil. So this is good here in the case of our uh, SDH or soil transmitted helmets. So this includes here your Ascaris, your Trichuris, and we have also here your hookworm. So it's being called here as soil transmitted helmets because this is the parasite where it requires soil in order for their life cycle. Okay, the soil here is needed in order for their egg to become embryonated. Para magmature ang egg nila, magdevelop into embryo and larva and eventually hatch. Without the soil, then eventually they, this one will not undergoing here embryonation process. And therefore, hindi siya magmamature ang kanyang life cycle, kanyang egg. Okay, and therefore you call it once your soil transmitted because again, you get infected here by the soil because again, uh, the soil serve here as the um, 
the means here for the the egg of the parasite to get embryonated. And once it gets embryonated, it try to develop into the embryo and try to hatch and try to liberate your larva on that. Okay, but what you get infected, you get infected here by ingestion of the soil containing the embryonated egg. Okay, then we have your snail transmitted group. So the source of infection here would be the snail. You, you eat the snail. Okay, so just like in a case, for example, of our flux, or you call this one just your trematode. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, flux is other name for that's your trematode. Our cestose is your uh, tapeworm. Okay, then we have also here the arthropod transmitted. So you can find it here by the bite okay, of the, um, the insect vector. So for we have here the malaria, filaria. So our arthropod here would be the mosquito. So we here the vector. We have also trypanosoma. You can find it here by the bite of your triatoma bug or your ridovid bug. Leishmania, you can find it here by the sandfly or the chachin fly. And all of that one are um, vector transmitted or they have the insect vector. Animal or food transmitted. So basically, you can find it also here by the soil infection are those animals which are infected. And you get infected by that by either ingestion of that contaminated food like in the case, for example, of our amoeba, our flagellates like your jarja. And we have also eating of the flesh or the muscles here, serrated muscles containing the, the larva stage, which is the infective stage, in the case of your trichinella spiralis. Contact transmitted. So this uh, close contact, like in the case of sexual contact then. So like your trichinella. We have your trichomonas vaginalis. So you can find it here through your close contacts. Specifically, that's your sexual contact. Another one source of the infection would be oneself, or you call it once your auto infection or retro infection. So it this is infection here characterized by the entire cycle of your parasite here. Try to start again, even if the parasite do not leave the body of the host. So it can start again, okay, from your larva, the magiging adult, the adult lay egg, and then the egg here, okay, will hatch into your body and can reinfect and have your another life cycle again started. So for that, we have your capillaria philippinensis because meron siyang, um, there is a, 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 a typical na, now, female will try to lay the larva, so with that, it can reinfect again. Another one, we have here your enterobius vermicularis or your pinworm. For the pinworm, so the adult female here try to lay eggs on your anus. Okay, so, pag nag ng egg, ang egg niya kasi is already partially embryonated. Kasi may partially embryonated, may embryo na siya, so ready to hatch na agad. Lalabas siya sa anus natin because this one is found in your large intestine. Then, maglilay siya ng egg in your anus area. And then, I remember here that the egg here is partially embryonated. So, pag naglay siya ng egg, mag-hatch agad ang egg. Pag nag-hatch ang egg, it will develop here to your larva. Since ang larva mo ay nasa, since nasa anal area ito, ang larva from that area will going to enter your body. Papasok siya ulit sa katawan natin. And therefore, able to start another infection cycle, and you call it one as your retro infection, or you call it one also as auto infection. And right, then we have your mode of transmission. So, pas na being mode of transmission, so it is a way how you get infected. Paano ganon the the process, the sort mode of transmission. It's different here from our source of the infection. Okay, like for example, we have mode of transmission, like in the case of your entamoeba. Okay, so in the amoeba here, you get infected by, okay, contaminated food in water. So, ang source na infection na is contaminated food in water. But your mode of infection here is fecal oral, that's ingestion. Okay, another one, we have your intimate oral or kissing here. So, like in the case of your trichomonas tenax. Okay, so your mode of transmission is by kissing. Or intimate uh, oral contact, kissing, gano. 
Okay, so because you are trichomonas tenax, okay, you usually try to inhabit here our mouth area. So, ayan. So, pag, pag tinanong ka dito, what's the source of the infection? So, mouth, ganun. And the mode of transmission here, we have kissing or intimate contact. Ito naman, what's the source of the infection? We have contaminated food. Uh, the mode of infection, we have your fecal oral. Okay, then we have also here either mode of transmission. We have here your skin penetration. So, you can have here the active larval or the penetration, skin penetration, just in the case, for example, of our hookworm, our strongyloides, and we have also here our schistosomes. Strongyloides, tericoralis, and we have also your schistosomes. Another one, you could also have your skin penetration by the bite of your insect vector, like in the case, for example, of your malaria, and we have also here your filaria. Okay, genitals, so you can find it here by sexual intercourse or sexual contact. So like in the case of your trichomonas vaginalis, you could also have your entamoeba histolytica. You can also get infected here by your nose or intranasal or by inhalation. So like in the case of your enterobius uh, vermicularis, you can get infected by that one not only by ingestion, contaminated food and water, but as well as by inhalation. In the case of our free-living uh, amoebas, Negleria and Acantamoeba, you can find it here by intranasal. Since they are found here on the water, so like if you try to swim in contaminated swimming pool, then you get infected by that. Okay, then we have here the transplacenta. So the mother is infected with that parasite during the pregnancy and eventually the parasite can be transmitted to the baby. Okay, within the womb of the mother. Like in the case, for example, of your Toxoplasma gondii. Okay, then we have here some forms of the preventions. Okay, in order for us then to prevent here the infection with our parasites. So like we have here your parasite awareness education program. So especially here knowing the life cycle, the parasite, it will also eventually give you an understanding about how you get infected and how to prevent the parasite infection. We have also here the use of the insecticide, especially for the mga vector borne natin or mga insect borne. Then we have also here the use of the netting, proper ways, treatment, good personal hygiene, okay, pro properly cooking your food. Although sometimes uh, if your food has been contaminated with a parasite, if you try to cook that one properly, it can still prevent the infection. And we have also unprotected sexual relations. Okay, so since we'll be dealing here with the different species of the parasites, so this is a um, binomial system of classification or giving names with our living organism here. So we speak about the binomial system here. So it's being given a two name or a scientific name. So the first name of that called this one is the genus, and the second name would be the species of your organism and you call this one your specific epithet okay the first letter in our genus here is a capital letter and all the rest here and all also the letters here in your species should be written as a small letter and then all you need to do here either italicize or underline that one so that will signify that one is your scientific name as for the diseases usually um Binidilagyan na lang natin ng yasis, yasis, something like that. Ang kanyang genus name that would refer here to the infection or the disease caused by that parasite. Like in a case, for example, if you're trichomonas vaginalis, so it try to cause here trichomoniasis. Okay, then we have here your classification of your organism. So, we consider here our parasite as... um eukaryotic organism. So when speak about the eukaryotic organism, that one would have the nucleus. And mem mention membrane-bound nucleus. Okay, so all our parasites are eukaryotic organisms. However, some of your parasites are having the very simple na, uh, body plan. They are unicellular, so those belong especially for the uh, protozoans, like yung mga ano natin, amoeba, flagellates, even your coccygian, 
So they'll belong here to your prozoans. Then we have also your metazoans. On the other hand, those are having the complex body structure and they are, I mean to say they have, you call it ones are multi, multicellular na, na organism or parasites. Like in the case, for example, of your nematodes or the roundworm, in the case of your cestodes or your tapeworm, in the case of your trematodes or your flukes, they have a very complex body plan and we consider them here as your multicellular and therefore they are, you call it ones as metazoans. Okay, so thank you.